you're going to start by understanding the basics of responsive design. Let's say I'm on my laptop and I'm looking at this marketplace. It has a search bar over here, filters on the side, maybe it's like a shopping app. And then these little boxes that I can scroll down and look at. And then this is like filters. If this wasn't built responsively and I was trying to look at this on a phone, we would see it one of two ways. Either like this where the whole laptop screen just shrunk down or like this where it's cut off and you only see the side of it that actually fits on the phone screen. Neither of these look like good applications that I would want to use. That's why building responsibly is so important. Let's try this again. This was my marketplace app on a laptop. Now when we translate it to a phone, it'll look a little more like this where you have the search bar up here. The filters are like this instead of on a side panel and they really only show one or two things per section. This is much more fitting for the smaller phone screen size and this still looks good on the big screen size. And the difference between this one and this one isn't that much. You're still showing all the same elements, search bar, filtering, and the actual products. You just changed how they look. In this course, we are not going to be building fully responsively. We're not going to convert this app design to look good on a laptop because its use case is really only about the app and we want to keep it a little more simple. But we are going to build slightly responsibly and I want to show you why that's still important. One of the handy things Flutterflow does is up here provide you with this responsive bar where you can move between tablet, laptop, and phone. But if you click on it again, you can also change phones. So right now I'm on the iPhone 13, but the moment I go to the 14 Pro Max, we see the screen size change. And the same with this OnePlus 8 Pro. And especially with the Sony. The overall idea is the same, it's still a small screen. But building responsibly will allow it to look good with those minor changes in dimensions. So now we can get to the fun part and see how we can actually do this in Flutterflow. On our widget tab, we can see something called layout elements. This is going to allow us to build our apps using mainly rows and columns. I'm going to show you how each of them works. I'm going to drag a column onto this page and you can't really see it because there's currently nothing in it, but we can see that we want to drag some elements into this column. You can use anything, photos, text, but for the sake of this lesson, I'm going to use containers because it really allows us to see the responsive abilities. We see that the moment we, let me show you that again, the moment we drop the container into this column, this column contracted to only fit the size of our container. A column allows multiple things stacked on top of each other. So I can go here and drag another container into the column and we see they go one on top of the other. I'm going to just quickly change the color so we can see it a little better. And you can keep doing this. But how does this build responsively? 
If we click on this container and scroll down here to container properties, we can see that we can assign it a width and a height. And if we increase the height, say to 200, we see that all of the other things in the column get pushed down accordingly. But if we look a little further, we also see this thing called min height and max height and min width and max width. Let's give it a min height of 100 and a max height of 150. We see that this contracted, even though the height set at 200, this trumps that. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And it went directly to our min height, which was only 100. You really need to play around with these controls to get comfortable with it and make these containers do exactly what you want. But we'll do enough of that in this course that I'm sure you will be an expert by the end. Another cool thing about containers is this expansion. Now, what does it mean? Right now, it's not going to take up any available space. Whatever these dimensions are, whatever the minimum space it can take up will be. If I give this a min height of 50, we'll see it contract. Whatever the minimum space it can take up will be, it will contract in that space. To have it take up the available space only if it needs to. I'll show you a little bit of what that means in a second. This third one, which you will probably be using the most, is going to make it take up all of the available space. So we can see that there are three over here, and right now this is at the min height of 50. The moment I click this button, we see this take up all of the available space. Now I'm going to go on this black container. If I click this as well, we're going to see both of these divide up the space from here all the way to here, sharing it 50-50, minus the 100 pixels that this is currently taking. Now we can see what this middle one does. If this expands fully, it would take up a third, a third, and a third. However, right now in this smallest setting, we see it only takes up the 100 by 100. If I click this, it's going to reserve this third of space that it has, but the actual container will only stay 100 by 100. So this is a great example to see all three of the different types squished all the way, squished but still leaving that space open, and expanded. If I add another container in, if I set it here, all four divide up the space, and we can keep doing this. The properties for rows are similar. If I go back to this build tab, take a row, and drag it actually into the container over here, we can see it there, and I can drag a container into that row we added previously. Let's make this a different color. And I'm going to set it to this expand and see what happens. Nothing because it's already taking up the available space of that this black container that this black container gives it. If I expand this to 200, we see this grows as well. I'm going to click back on here because I want to show you another handy thing you can do. Right now, its height is set to 100 and we can expand it like so. But if I click this infinity button here, it will take up all the available space, which is that of its parent container. I'm going to set this back to 100. This is a row in here, so let's drag another container into our row. And these two will split the space if I click this. If I keep it at this, and give it a width of 40, oops, 40. This will condense and this will expand. You know the deal by now. Right now, these two containers are going edge to edge. But what if I don't want that? 
if we go back to this container and let it stretch all the available space, it looks odd for these to be going edge to edge. If we look at any app, there's this nice padding on the side. If this went all the way over, that would be strange. How can we add that? If I go back to our container over here, right under this expansion which we are dealing with, we can see that there's also padding, where we can add custom padding on all of these sides. Common one is 16. I'm going to add this by all sides by clicking here and just increasing this to 16. One thing to note, if you're coming from bubble, these paddings are more like bubble margins. It takes up space outside the actual container instead of inside it. So this is still preserving its size. I'm going to add some padding on each of these elements as well. This is where the custom padding comes in because I don't want too much space in between these two. I just want to keep it nice and uniform. I'm going to make both of these our fixed width now. And we can see that there is a lot of empty space on the side. If I click on the row that they're in, we can right now see that they are left aligned. If I go here, I can actually move where these two blocks are. You can make them left aligned in the center to the right, split the space evenly. Space around or space between, so these two are pushed all the way to the side as much as possible. Remember here where we went and added padding? I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Then when we go back to this row, let's put them in the center. We also have this option to add spacing right here. So if I add 16 pixels of spacing, it's going to split these items. If I went ahead and added another container, it would split between that as well. And we can keep moving these around. All of these controls are same on a column as well. Just like we have item spacing, we also have start spacing, which is more similar to your padding from bubble and you can and there are just some handy things that Flutterflow also provides like apply to start and end. A couple more things we can play around with. One is cross axis alignment. So right now we can see these three are in the center and we can move them left and right with these. But if we wanted to make these at the top we can just change the cross axis alignment as well as make them stretch all the available space from one control down here. You can add padding within the row, which acts as a margin for the row, but we can see it serves very similar to padding in bubble. And you can also change the alignment. If I make the cross axis alignment center, for example, we st see that these can move around based on where I place them in this grid. That's the bulk of our lesson. I just want to quickly cover a couple more you will often use. One is a list view. You can just keep adding elements into a list. And the last one is a grid view where you can add these containers Let's add six and then control some of the features like horizontal, vertical, the number in each row, the spacing. The spacing in between rows. And a couple more. One handy thing is shrink wrap. 
What if you don't just want one large grid view? If you want to add elements under it, you have to click this shrink wrap. And then under that, I can add my own row. Or can I? One thing Flutterflow does very well is it makes sure that you can't break your application. So it keeps giving you these handy tips. Right now we have the grid view and I'm trying to put a row under it, but there's no infra there's no structure to support that. So Flutterflow suggests that you wrap them in a column so you can stack them. And it handily does that for you. This is my row and this is my grid view. One more thing to note, similar to how these containers have these expansions, so do things like rows and grid views. So I can expand this all the way. We see this row is squished all the way to the bottom. I can do this and have this row when I add in more items or I can just keep it like this. Responsive design is a fundamental skill and I hope this provided a start to how to do it in Bubble. You will get to start building and further our understanding of responsive design. In the next video, we will dissect what this home page looks like and what column, rows, and containers it's made of. I encourage you to think about it yourself and I'll see you in the next one.